My mama was a sunshine soldier Every day was a dream come true She said that we were blessed by the breath deep inside us She can make the colors of the sky turn blue She said, honey, what you gonna do today? You're second guessing every single move you make You're definitely gonna have some pretty hard days But I'll be right there for you And she said, before I go There is one thing you should know All of my people, all of my people need love. I give some. I give love to all of my people. All of my people need love. I give some. I give love to all of my people. All of my people need love. I give some. Cause in the end, the love we take got nothing on the love we make. So give love. So give love. You're gonna be a light in a cold world You got so much love blowing out of your veins To my people feeling down and my people feeling empty I got so much of this love, I gotta give it away She said, honey, what you gonna do today? You're second guessing every single move you make You're definitely gonna have some pretty hard days But I'll be right there for you And she said, before I go There is one thing you should know All of my people, all of my people need love I give some I give love to all of my people All of my people need love I give some I give love to all of my people All of my people need love I give some Cause in the end the love we takes Got nothing on the love we make Hey, welcome to church. We're so glad that you're joining us today. If this is your first time, welcome, and we're so glad that you are joining us. Would you take a second, and would you fill out the Connect card on our website, church.one? The QR code will take you there. Here at One Church, we continue to pray for one person to share God's love with every day. Hey, would you do me another favor? Would you take a second and share the service with a friend, a family member, or just anybody that God would lay on your heart? Go ahead, do it right now, invite them. Here at One Church, we wanna connect you to God, to people, and to the mission of Jesus. And one of the ways that we do that is through our 10-week discipleship program called Rooted, where we wanna connect you with God, the church, and your purpose. If you wanna learn more about Rooted and how you might be able to join a future group, go to our website, church.one slash rooted to learn more. Each week here at One Church, we meet and we gather in many locations. And where you're watching from right now is one of those locations. Head over to our YouTube channel. Make sure that you subscribe and like and turn on the notifications bell so you can stay caught up with everything that God's doing here at One Church. God hears and he answers prayer. We're reminded in scripture to make our requests known to God and God will guard our hearts with peace. So I wanna invite you right now, send your prayer requests in each week we get prayer requests and we receive an email with all of your requests here and we pray for them as a staff. Use the chat, you can click the QR code and fill the connect card out. We're praying and believing God to answer your prayers. We're continuing in our new series called Soul Train and we're gonna hear a sweet word from Mike today. Before that, we're gonna have a time of worship. How good and how pleasing it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. So right now where you're watching from, let's worship the King, let's give the Lord all we have. Lift your voice, lift your hands, open your hearts to the King. Oh 
God, for your great mercy. It is well. All my words fall short. I have nothing new. How could I express? could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must end.
I don't know about you, but I have lived in the goodness of God. I am grateful every single day that God gives me a chance to wake up. We are in a beautiful season right now, a season of celebrating the goodness of God. Would you take a second with us right now and celebrate the goodness of God? We celebrate five awesome things that God is doing every week in the life of our church. We call that our high five and Ariana is going to share those with us right now. Let's celebrate. Up at number five, we are celebrating Tony and what God is doing in her life. Tony previously has been attending our Manchester outpost, and this past Saturday, she came to be baptized. It was a beautiful celebration of her faith in Jesus. Way to go, Tony. This high five goes out to you today. Up at number four, this past week, our Brandon outpost spent their Saturday going out into their community to take on some day projects for people in need. They painted houses, built decks, and even put together wheelchair ramps. Way to go, Brandon. What an awesome way to share God's love. In at number three, participants have begun the powerful journey through Rooted this week. And this first step is a big step. Getting acquainted with people in the group, sharing some stories, and praying together over this new adventure. Like any adventure, it'll take an open mind and an open heart. But the joy of drawing closer to God and others is a great reward. On behalf of all of us here at One Church, we are sending all our Rooted groups a church-wide high five to strong roots in God's love. Here at number two, last Saturday, our Manchester Outpost threw a huge block party in conjunction with five other local churches full of food, obstacle courses, and even games of bingo. Over 500 people across all these churches joined in on the fun. High five Manchester to sharing God's love with your community. And finally, up at number one, we're celebrating Tom and Heidi and what God is doing in their lives. They've been attending our Bedford Outpost and this past Sunday, they were baptized. Tom and Heidi, we are celebrating you today. High five. Thanks for joining us for our high five and we can't wait to celebrate with you in the next one. We are in week two of our sermon series, Soul Train. And in this sermon series, we're celebrating all the incredible things that God is doing in our church, in our lives, in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces, everywhere we go. We just believe that God is just pouring out love on people because that is what is in his heart. We know God is wired like that. We know God exists like that because of the gesture that he gave us when he gave us his son, Jesus. I mean, this is a really big deal that God so loved me that he would send perfect, beautiful, wonderful Jesus into the world to die for my sin so that I could be a son of God, so that you could be sons and daughters of God. This is really, really good news. Actually, our Soul Train memory verse is always on the greatest hits of Bible verses. This is John 3.16 at home. We're going to see the verses on the screen. I'd love for you to read this with us in the room. I'd love for us to read this out loud. And if we can let it uh, go together like this. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, yeah, woohoo, nice work. When I think of Soul Train and I think about the church that God has given us, one church, this is a church that we get to connect to. I'm so thankful to be here. God's church, man, it's, it's picking up speed and it's gaining momentum. And we got stations uh, in a lot of places, we have stations online. We have stations in Bedford, in Manchester, in Concord, in Franklin, in Rutland, Vermont, in Brandon, Vermont. People are like being introduced to Jesus there. And we're saying, hey, God wants you on the train. And we know God wants everybody on the train again because of the gift of Jesus. But the reality is the bigger the train gets and it's getting big. Right in this room, it's big online. It's big in all of our outposts. It's growing each and every Sunday. More and more people are connecting with Jesus. The bigger the train gets, the more it's going to take to keep moving. So we're saying, let's get on the soul train together. And then when we're on the train, when we're in God's church, can we be like, hey, I'm going to contribute. 
I'm going to use my gifts. I'm going to use my time. I'm going to use my talent to help this train move forward so that we can keep yelling like all aboard, right? All aboard. We want more people in the kingdom in the shortest time. So I'm thrilled that we get to celebrate together. I think Soul Train is incredibly appropriate for the season that God has us in at One Church right now. So let's keep celebrating every time we get together. Now, when we get on the train, it's, it's, it's really important for me to understand like who I am, why I was created, how I contribute, how does my life matter? It, realistically, in the big picture, for each and every one of us in the room and for everybody online, like, how does my life matter? What is the purpose of life? We're always trying to discover that. So we believe that we were created by God to be in a relationship with God. Like, peel everything else back, and it's that simple. We're created by God to be in a relationship with God. And when I come to terms with that, I start filtering life pretty differently. So the first thing I want to talk about this morning is to know who we are. I want to know who I am. And when I say that, again, I mean, I want to know that I'm created by God to be in relationship with God. I had a high school reunion invitation recently, uh, within the last couple months. And every time I think about high school, I think about, I had no clue who I was. <laughs> Now, I'm not even close, and that's fine, right? It's high school, everybody's, no one has a clue. But I knew I didn't have a clue based on what my closet looked like. Because one day, my clothes were all bright. I had this neon, yellow, nautica fleece. It was dope. I glowed in the dark, like radioactive. Couldn't get away with nothing, right? And, and, and so that was part of my attire. But then the next day would be less bright, all baggy. So I weighed like a buck 30, and I had like double XL pants, and that was who I was in high school. But then the next day was real tight, right? These are tight, as you guys, everybody can see. It was real tight the next day. And then the day after that, it was like GQ, yacht flair, business casual, going to high school, didn't make any sense to have on khakis and a dress shirt and a tie and no joke, a sweater thrown over my shoulder like Carlton from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Soul Train, shout out, right? Like it, it, it was that, that's who I was. And I'm like, what, what, who, who was I? I don't know. Um, so high school was hilarious for me. Not my best moment. But it was shortly after high school that someone looked at me and was like, Mike, you know who you are? You're a child of God. Like, you, you're a child of God. You're the beloved of God. I know beloved is a wicked churchy word. And I don't love all the churchy words, but the churchy word I love is I am the beloved of God. Now, at One Church, we're trying to stay focused on knowing who we are. We're trying to stay focused on knowing that God has a plan for our life. Like we're on the train together and we want to help keep the train moving forward. And the primary way we ask all of us to do this is to pray for one. So pray for one is our big, bold, beautiful, simple prayer of faith that says, God, will you give me one person to share your love with today? Actually, I'm going to write this on the screen. Boom. And I'm going to ask you to join me in prayer online. Would you pray with me as well? We're going to ask, God, would you give me one person to share your love with? Can we say that together? God, would you please give me one person to share your love with? Okay. So pray for one for us isn't a mantra. It's not a slogan. It, it, it's so much more than that. It's the thing that helps us remember we're on the soul train and this thing's moving forward. And again, we're yelling all aboard. And the beauty of this reminds me that on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays, every day of my life that I'm inviting people in. Right? We're inviting people in. It's wonderful. And when we pray for one, we connect to God. I'm going to draw a church. This is going to boom, steeple. Praying for one helps me connect to God. And when I connect to God, I'm reminded that I'm created by God and that I'm created to have a relationship with God. In Romans 12, 1, 
we see the Apostle Paul talk to this church that he loves, and he's talking to them about what it looks like to have a relationship with God. So what does it mean when I understand that God is for me, not against me? I've stepped into covenant relationship with God through his son, Jesus, and what he did on the cross for me. I, I open a text like this and I'm like, oh, that's what it means to be a follower of Jesus. The words are going to be on the screen. Love for everyone to follow along. It reads like this. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, his pleasing, and his perfect will. Why am I here? Right? Like, what does God have for me? God's inviting us into a lifestyle of fellowship, of friendship with him, of worship. He's, he's inviting us in to his mission and his story. And for me to be on the train and for me to make the train look appealing and, and desirable for other people that aren't on the train yet, but they're like, all right, you're on the train. What's up with you? And I want to hear a little bit of your story for us to appeal to the people we love and be like, hey, the train is a wild ride and you want to get on, you want to get in on it. It's we first need to see ourselves through the mercy of God. I can't tell you how critical I can be towards myself. There are days I am not kind to myself. There are days I do not know how to say, Mike, all right, like, yeah, that's hard and challenging, um, but it's going to be okay. And you're going to put your head on the pillow tonight and you're going to wake up and it's going to be a, uh, a new day. And you can experience mercy because God has poured mercy all over our lives. I'm not always great at, my, at seeing myself through the mercy of God. But when I'm on this train and I'm waving out the window and I'm saying, hey, get on board. It's I want to be alive with mercy in my eyes and not, not just mercy for you, but mercy for me and not just mercy for me, but mercy for you. I want to filter everything I see through the mercy that God has lavished on our lives. I'm concerned for myself and I'm concerned for us because I think we forget to see ourselves through the lens of mercy at times. And any day, that's my day. That's not my favorite day. My favorite day is when I can remember everything that Jesus did for me and that I stand totally in mercy. See, when I stand in mercy, then I want to be a living sacrifice. I'm, I'm wowed by God's kindness and generosity and favor and grace. It's, it's literally, sometimes it's hard to process in my mind because it's overwhelming. But I'm like, God, if your love for me is really like this, if it's that lavish, if it's that rich, I want to live for you. I, I want to live my life for you. I want to be worshipful. I love how Paul addresses a community. Back in the day, the community used words like we and us. And today, I'm tempted to use words like me and I. But even in the brilliance of the Bible, the, the Apostle Paul is like, hey, each and every one of us, we're going to present our bodies to God as a living sacrifice. So that's for all of us in the room. That's for everybody online. That's what God is inviting us into. Where I'm saying, all right, God, here I am. Here's my life. It's a sacrifice for you. And then there's one last piece of that first text that's so beautiful. It's talking about being transformed as my mind is renewed. So as I open this incredible book that communicate that God is for me, for us, not against us, as we dig into that, it talks about mind renewal and hopefully I'm getting to the place where I'm starting to think about myself and think about you the way that God thinks about me and thinks about you. 
And when we collectively do that, one church, right? When we collectively do that, everywhere we spend our time, the soul train, man, people are like, oh, I, I want to get aboard. Like, I want to get down with that. So when we pray for one, we connect to God. We're reminded that we have an invitation from God. Also, when we pray for God, and when we pray for one, we connect to mission. I'm sorry, to people. Forgive me. See that? Right? It's good, right? Woohoo, Bob Ross. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? I don't mess around. And, and, and these two, wow, they're so connected. Right? I, I can't connect to God without connecting to people. And I can't connect to people without connecting to God. Every person I connect with is made in the image of God, created by God, loved by God. So, so I love this stuff. So we talked about know who we are. And here's the next step to know whose we are. Right? I'm created by God to be in a relationship with God. And God invites us into his church. When we say yes to Jesus, we're not just saying yes to Jesus. We're saying yes to each other. We're saying yes to a, a, a local expression of, of God's people. We're saying yes to the vision of the church, the mission of the church. We're saying like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm here and I want to be involved. I was joking about my dress code. I should have wore, actually, what was hilarious is I tried to buy a, what's it called? A conductor hat. In the conductor, because I was going to be like, all oh, aboard, I was going for it. I was really trying. It was a kid's. It fit like this much on my head. I was like, I can't wear that. I'm not doing that. I'm not getting on screen uh, with that thing on my head. Nope. Um, but when I joke about what I was looking like in high school, I'm like, oh, maybe if I wasn't so busy trying to pick out my outfit, I would have went to class. Maybe I would have graduated. I don't know. Who knows? So I was supposed to graduate in 2000. Anyone that was supposed to graduate in 2000, that was a really big deal. We were superior to everyone in the world, right? Class of 2000, the calendar was changing. The clock was going to explode. It was all good. That, that was us. But I didn't graduate. So I was a super senior, five years, right? Because I was too worried about my clothes. It wasn't my clothes. <laughs> no, there was other things preventing me from going to class. So I, I'm like, all right. I'll regroup. I'll graduate in 2001. I'm sorry. Yeah, 2001. Turn a new leaf. It's all good. It didn't. It didn't work out like that. Um, got GED. Yeah, solid. So it's good enough. That's what they said about it. It was, it was good enough. Yeah. Clapping for GED. I love this. It was, so here's, the, oh, I say all this 2000, 2001, because when I get invited to reunions, Come to your 15th reunion. Come, it's 20th now. Come to your 20th reunion. I'm like, which one do I go to? I, I, don't, I don't belong in the 2000 crew. I, I, like, I don't belong there. That's how I feel. I don't belong there. I don't belong in the 2001 crew with the GED crowd. Like, like are we going to have a party? What are we going to do? And I say all that to say, if I don't feel like I belong, I don't want to go. I, I, I don't want to go if, if people are going to be like, oh, were you in our class? Are you good enough to be here? <laughs> like, can we see your transcripts? No, you can't. They're not, they don't <laughs> exist. You can't see them. But we belong here. Like, we belong here. And even in the moments when I didn't think I belonged here, uh, man, I belonged here. Because of what Jesus did on the cross for me. When the lies come in in my head and they're loud and they're aggressive and they're like, you're not good enough. Or you're not like everybody else there. And, and the narration just gets way out of control. I belong here with you. You belong here with me, with us. This is what Jesus does. We come into the soul train. We come into the church through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. It's, it's his invite. He's laying it out. And I just want us to know we belong and where we belong, we want to contribute. And where we belong, we want other people to belong. And so we want to live our lives with the perspective of, hey, you belong here. So this is Romans 12, verses 3 to 5. We're continuing in this paragraph. It reads like this. 
It says, for the grace, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith that God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to the other. You see what the Apostle Paul is trying to do? He, he, he's trying to unify, and he's trying to draw out the gifts in us. And he's trying to say, like, you matter, and you matter, and we contribute. And God designed us uniquely with skill set and desire and joy and happiness and sweet spots. And I don't do that, right? Like he, he designed all of us in this fashion. And when we come to the family of God and say, hey, I want to I want to contribute. I want to play a part. And that's our best us. Hands down. That is our best us. When everybody on the train is like, this is what I got. And this is what I'll give. And this is a part I'll play. And I'll, I can't play that part, but you got that part. And I can't play that part, but you over there, you have that part. Hands down, the best us. So when I say know whose we are, I'm saying we belong to Jesus and we belong to his church. And somehow, some way, we belong to each other. And as we walk this thing out together, man, we're going to see so many other people be like, I want to belong there. I don't know where I belong. I want to belong there. When we pray for one, we connect to people. And here's where I want to. Um, here's the last piece of connection. So we connect to God through pray for one. We connect to people through pray for one and we connect to mission. Last time I spelled that wrong. And when I was drawing this, I thought it looked like a hot dog in a bun. So, uh, so it's whatever. Um, yeah, it's whatever. It's, it's so connected. My friends, this, this prayer is so brilliant. I've been able to pray this with you as a church for the last 18 months of my life. This has added, some of you have been pray, praying this for years. As someone new to the game, the game, it's not a game. As, as, as someone new to one church and the soul train and everything that God is doing, this has changed my Wednesdays. This has changed when I go get my hair cut. This, it, it literally has added a dimension and an excitement to my life that I didn't have for 20 years of trying to be a Christian prior to this. This simple thing. So when I get up here and smile, I promise this is not like a manufactured thing. This is from my soul coming out saying I'm so thankful that I was invited into this. I had no clue. Man, I had no clue. So Know who we are, know whose we are, we belong to each other, and we're going to do our job. We're going to do our job. This is where we connect to mission. Romans 12, verses 6 to 8. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. And if it is serving, serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is encouraging, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, oh, do it cheerfully. That's, that's our mission. That's the job that God is inviting us. God, you created me to be in relationship with you. You gave me a sweet spot. And now I'm going to step into the church and be like, I'm going to do my job. I'm going to do what you laid out for me. For such a long time, I asked God, what is your plan for my life? Like, give it to me, clear 
cross the T's, dot the I, spell it out, text me, right? Like, just give me an itinerary. I'm awesome with checklists. Let me know what your will is for my life. And he's like, dude, love people, right? Love me. Just live life. Do, do your thing. And I was like, oh, I didn't know. Sorry. No, I'm just kidding. I'm learning. I'm growing. Old school train, shoveling coal, right? Can you imagine it? Can, can you imagine people trying to keep a massive thing moving, stoking fire? I think it's combusting some pistons. Obviously, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I've seen it on movies. So I know there's something about shoveling coal that is just, uh, 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 right? It's, it's that, it's that, it's you, you drive and then you throw, you drive. Well, I don't even have a shovel. I, my bad. I should have brought the shovel next time. <laughs> but this is, this is part of it. Like being on the train, keeping this thing moving, staying focused, keeping our eye on pray for one. It's, 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 I was going to say it's a lot and I was going to say it's our job, but it's our joy. <laughs> And I don't want to twist that up. I don't, I don't want to make it. I don't want to make bad news. I don't want to make good news, bad news. It's, it's our joy. But to shovel coal, if we're going to shovel coal and we're going to see this thing move, man, we got to make a plan. All of us. Everyone that's like, I was created by God to be in relationship with God. I'm on the soul train. I want more people involved. I'm telling you, each and every one of us in that category, we need to have a plan. Because if we don't have a plan, stuff's not going to happen. It, it just, it won't happen. It will fall off. It won't get done. It will be like the email I get home almost every day at the end of work, <laughs> at the end of the day. And I'm like, I didn't send that one. I didn't respond to that one. We need a plan. So keeping this thing moving. I, I used to be, uh, I, I've come to the place where I really like talking about giving and generosity. And that's a gift for me because I stayed really quiet about that for a long time. But I didn't understand I needed a plan to give. I was joking about there was a time when I worked at a church like 15 years ago that I was on giving probation. And, and I was like, what happened? How did I get on probation? And I've been on worse probations. So I was like, it's not the end of the world. But know what happened? I didn't have a plan. I, I really didn't. I didn't have an Excel sheet. I didn't know where my money was going. I, I didn't know how beautiful it was to give to the mission of God. I missed it. I was treating it as a chore that I didn't want to get done. And now to know that giving changes lives, it's, it, it's a lot in a good way. When I say do our job, my friends, this is my job because of you, because you give, because you have a plan, because you're generous. And it's not just me. It's a staff that, that loves to do what we get to do. And we do this because of your generosity. And I hope if anyone's here watching in the room and you're like, I don't have a giving plan, please, would you consider doing that? Because we really want this train to go far and fast. And, and it takes resources to make that happen. Back to high school, in my yearbook, I was voted most likely to have this for a job. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not true. Most likely to not have a job. That was, no. They didn't get, no, I wasn't in it. But if there was one, that's my sweet spot. And to think that God in his kindness, in his love, in John 3, 16, the love of God that transforms life after life after life after life, that this could be my job because of the work of Jesus. It's, it means everything to me. So we want to have a plan and then we want to be disciplined. It's one thing to have a plan and then it's another thing not to implement the plan. So I hope we set our alarms I hope we're trying to eat healthy. I hope there's some kind of exercise in our life, even if it's just taking a walk. I hope we understand that God gave us our bodies to steward and, and take care of because where our bodies go, then we get to express the love of God to people. And we, and, and we get to stick to it and hold on to it and fight for it. 
all of my disciplines. I'm like, I need help. So John Rose, will you help me be disciplined? Chris Bryan, a guy I get to work closely with, will you help me be disciplined? I, I, I'll take all the help I can get in those categories of helping me stick to my plan because I don't want to be the guy that's like, oh, I have this plan and it doesn't come to, into play because I didn't put the steps in place. So we're going to have a plan and we're going to be disciplined. And here's the last part. We're not going to quit. We're not going to quit. Like we're on this thing for the long haul. We're on the Jesus train for the long haul. I love Jesus's friends in the Bible that are with him uh, and, and, and live their lives for him. Even after they failed and stumbled and, and, and fell back and came in. Uh, they went through a lot. And yet they're like, no, I'm in with you, Jesus. I'm not going to quit because you didn't quit on me. If anyone had a plan, was disciplined and didn't quit, it's Jesus. And to think about what that plan entailed with, all right, Father, sin really wrecked that world we made. Sin is hurting the people we love. Sin is creating separation between our love and our creation. If the plan is, I got to step in and cross it up. I'll do that. Like I'll step in and you can send me and I'll go and that will be the plan and I will be disciplined and I will stick to it and I won't quit even when I want to. I won't tap out even when it's terrible. I'm there. Because I'm for them. Jesus is for us. Through and through. Jesus is for us. And so I want our plan to be. We are for him. And we want other people to know. That he is for them. Until they know. That he is for them. And they want other people to know. That he is for them. That's, that's where we want to live. And nothing reminds us of that like remembering what Jesus did for us in communion. As we peel back the top layer, this wafer represents Jesus' body. The way Jesus phrases it with his friends is he's like, hey, this is my body and I'm going to give it for you. And he says, when we gather to remember this, because it's so healthy for our head and it's so healthy for our heart. This is Jesus saying yes to us right here. If we're saying yes to Jesus, if we're on the train, Jesus, the soul train, will you take this with me? Jesus did his job. This is, this is it. It cost him so much, but there's no regret in him because he sees us and he loves us and he enjoys us. Let this remind us of his deep love for us to the King. I'd like to pray a blessing on us. I want to remind anyone that would like prayer, Tina and Jason will be to our left. Anybody that's like, I was created by God to be in a relationship with God and I want to step into that. I've been running from that. I didn't feel like I belonged to that. There is an invitation to say, Jesus, uh, I want you. And I need you to know that Jesus says, I want you. If you'd like to take a step in baptism, we'd love to celebrate that as well. Any way we can walk with you on your faith journey, we want to be a part of that. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your work. Thank you for worship. Thank you for what you're accomplishing. God, you want everybody on board. We know that because you gave us Jesus. Help us live for you. Help us love you. Help us do our jobs in Jesus name.
If it's bandaging the broken or washing filthy feet, here I am, Lord, send me. If it's loving one another, even when we don't agree, here I am. If I'm poor, if I'm wealthy, I'll serve you just the same. Here I am, Lord, send me on the mountain or the valley. I will choose to pray. Here I am. Be glad I chose to say, here I am, Lord, send me. Well done, good and faithful, I live to hear you say, here I am. Send us, we will go. We go, Lord God, sharing your love, joyfully anticipating what you are going to do. The great and mighty things that you do, Lord God. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at his feet. He has done great.
wait to see what you do next. What a great word we just heard from Mike. Don't give up. You know, God never gives up on us. He never quits. He never turns his face away from us. He loves you. No matter who you are, and no matter what you've done, and no matter what's been done to you, you have a place in God's kingdom. You know, you have a special gift that God wants to use, and he wants it to be shared with the world. If you have a prayer request that you want us to pray for this week, head over to our website, fill out the connect card, or you can even just message us in the chat, and we'll be praying and believing God with you. Your giving changes lives. Even right now, lives are being changed because of your generosity. If you'd like to give, even right now, there are a few ways that you can do that, and we thank you so much for your continued generosity. Hey, head to our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notifications bell to stay caught up with everything we have going on. If this was your first time, we're so glad that you joined us. We'll see you back here real soon. Have a wonderful week. God bless you.